Hi all, I'm Linda and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about intuition. One of the questions I get most commonly from friends of mine who are not on the same spiritual path or spiritual journey that I'm on is how can you determine or how can you differentiate if what you're sensing is in fact your intuition or is fear or some other emotion and then how to go about developing those intuitive skills. And I think those are really, really great questions. And my purpose with this video today is to give you some tips and tricks of things you can use to identify when something is your intuition and then how to develop those skills along the way. But first, one of the things that I want to talk about is to assure you that everybody is born with intuitive skills, that everybody is an intuitive, everybody has intuition. It's just that some of us have developed those skills better, more so than others. And I don't believe that that is necessarily each individual's fault. I mean, not that there's, it's anybody's fault, but I do think that what happens is that we are conditioned at a very, very young age to disconnect from ourselves, to disconnect from our feelings and from our own intuition to in order to really um, be in alignment with what other people want, what other people think, what other people believe, what other people think is right or what society, what is acceptable in our society. And for me, the way that I really define intuition is as a connection to myself, is being able to connect so deeply into myself that through that I connect back into source. Source being, you can insert your own word here, uh, some people call it God, some people call it the universe, some people call it source, different people have different names for it. I prefer to use the terms source or the universe. And uh, But I think that's what I think intuition is, is really a connection to source or to universal knowledge and to universal love, but through your own vehicle, which is your own soul, your own body, your own presence. So with that said, um, I'll, I want to talk a little bit about a few things that I think are important when trying to develop your intuitive skills. So one of the things that I think is really important to get in touch with is where in your body you feel your intuition and how does it feel. And I know that may sound strange and maybe even hard to conceptualize, but what I have found in my experience is that most people actually feel intuition in their body, right? Our body is a vehicle of information. So we oftentimes feel it in our body. Like for example, you've heard people refer to uh, their gut feelings. Oh, I had a gut feeling that this thing was going to happen, etc. And it's usually associated with negative events. But when they're talking about that, they're talking about a feeling in what is called the solar plexus chakra, which is a vortex of energy known as brittle circles that is about a, uh, an inch or two right above your belly button. Some other people seem to believe that your intuition, you would perceive your intuition as voices in your head or as a thought. Now, that may be true for some people. That is certainly not true for me. Uh, but mostly because of my own condition and because I'm someone who's arguably a little bit neurotic and a lot in my head a lot. Usually the voices that I hear in my head are in direct correlation to beliefs that have been put in my head by other people, you know, during my childhood years or, um, or my social conditioning or conditioning that was reinforced throughout the years. For me personally, my intuition happens at my solar plexus and it is usually a very calm but clear knowing. So it's really important that you are able to define where in your body you feel it and what it feels like to you. So for example, like I was saying, mine is in my solar plexus and it's usually a very calm, a very clear cut knowing. I don't usually, there's usually no questioning about it. So for example, if I'm um, trying to make a decision, like say maybe I'm dating someone and I don't know if it's going to work out or not, usually um, the feeling, the answer comes as a very, it, it's not even, it's really hard to explain verbally because there's no words attached to it. It's sort of like a movement in uh, my 
solar plexus chakra where I just know the answer. Now that's not, that's a little bit hard to define and that's not true for everybody, but that's the way that it feels for me, right? So I just wanted to give you that example so you can start getting a feeling of what the different ways of perception, perceiving your intuition may be. For other people, maybe dreams, for example. So there's a variety of ways that you can access that intuition and I think paying attention to your body is a really good way to learning where your intuition is coming from and what it feels like, recognizing what is your intuition versus something else. Now, tied to that, what I would say is that it is also very important for you to look back at other times in your life where you've had an intuitive hit, for example, that whether you've listened to it or not, but that you can look back, that you can remember, and then eventually the course of events prove that that feeling that you had was accurate potentially against all odds, right? So one of the ways that I was able to identify that that feeling in my stomach, that sort of, I'm gonna say stomach just for, for the sake of simplicity, but I, when I say stomach, I mean my solar plexus. One of the ways that I was able to identify that that was intuition was because there were several times where I had that sense, right? That those moments where, oof, I knew something, like that feeling, oh, this is gonna happen, or this is the right answer, or this is how I should, um, how I should respond, but I didn't follow it. And then, you know, days, weeks, months, years later, I look back on that, and the events that happen after that intuition prove that that's the, the path that I should have followed, right? So looking back on that, I still remember how that felt, and that's how I was able to start defining and streamlining what my intuition was like or what it felt like, where I felt it, right? Just looking back and saying, oh, I remember that time when I had that feeling and I didn't follow it, and then the results were not what I want, the outcome wasn't what I wanted or was painful or hurtful for me. That was my intuition. So then once you start looking back and identifying all those little times along the way where what you felt or sense at that moment was intuition, then you can start developing, from that information, you can start figuring out what the pattern is. And also recognize that intuition may not always look the same way along, uh, along your life, right? So for example, more often than not, like I said, my intuition is in knowing in my solar plexus, but that's not only the, the only way that I get intuitive hits is the most common one and is the most clear cut one for me. But I do get intuitive hits in other ways sometimes. So just be aware of that, right? Be aware of just looking back at your life and collect that data and use that to figure out what your pattern or your intuitive pattern is. So a tip that I think would be helpful for people to know is that in my own experience, intuition is not attached to anxiety. It's actually a fairly calm state or a fairly calm input of information. Right, um, and th th that doesn't mean that it's not associated with fear. You can have an intuitive hit for something and then eventually feel Fear, because, for example, if you have an intuitive hit that um, you should, I don't know, date that person, then you may be really fearful about rejection or fearful about asking them out, etc. But it's, it doesn't provoke, it doesn't create, it is not tied to anxiety. Intuition, to me, feels very calm and settled and clear. Now, I do differentiate between anxiety and fear, and please understand, I am not a therapist, I'm not a psychologist, so these are not clinical definitions. I'm just trying to differentiate between the two, uh, just for the sake of this video, uh, based on how I sense it in my own body, how it feels, how the vibration of those two feel different. Fear feels primal and feels deep, and it feels... Um, profound, whereas anxiety feels more jittery, sort of like that staticky kind of like just kind of feeling, I know that 
sounds weird, but um, anyways, um, this is more of a, and it seems to be tied to your thought process, whereas fear is more tied to a primal feeling. Anxiety, for me, is usually tied to a thought process, right? I start ruminating or thinking in a circular terms, right, just kind of going around in circles in the same thought, and I get very jittery, and my body gets very reactive and very buzzy and very jittery, right? So that's how I separate those two. And in my experience, when you're having those feelings or that, that feeling in your body, that's not your intuition. That is actually your anxiety. And sometimes your fears can manifest as anxiety. Because I'm while I differentiate between the two of them, those two sometimes and often can be linked. How, the reason why I, um, I'm explaining that is because I want you to understand that in my experience, intuition doesn't you oftentimes or usually feels very clear cut, very calm, very settled, not jittery or anxious. Side note, you know, everything that I say in this video is just take what resonates with you and what doesn't you can leave behind. I don't care. You know, there's no hard feelings. Uh, this is just really intended to give you some guidance and how to recognize and develop your skills. It doesn't mean that it's going to apply for everybody and it doesn't mean that it's going to be a fit for everybody. Okay? But anyways, Another suggestion that I think, or tip that I think is really, really helpful, and this is something that I used myself and was actually very helpful to me, is to start developing your intuition, but to start small, right? So it, I think one of the mistakes that people that are on this path or trying to develop their intuition make is that they immediately want to jump in. Oh, I'm going to use my intuition to find out if I should marry this person, right? Or if I should take this job or if I should move to a different country. Right? Those are pretty big decisions that are tied to a lot of psychological processes, to a lot of conditioning, your thought process, a lot of your fears, your hopes, your dreams, your desires, right? So they, they have a lot of weight, right? They're not decisions. They're decisions that are life-changing. So rather than testing your intuition with those, if you're starting and you're trying to develop your intuitive skills, just start small. So one of the things you can do is, for example, is when you're going to make a decision, and this is kind of trivial, but it, is, it actually can be very helpful because I've used it myself, is when you're trying to develop your intuition, just try to use it for something like, I don't know, deciding what restaurant you want to go to dinner. Or, or deciding what you want to eat. Just check in with your body and see how your body feels if you have options. You know, close your eyes, just really sense your body and feel, you know, just kind of how one choice feels versus the other and start developing your intuition that way. Just things that are really of no major consequence in your life. And the stronger your, um, your intuitive skills get, the more you do that, the stronger your intuitive skills are going to become. Along those same lines, one of the things that I also think people um, sometimes miss is the fact that you want to try and listen to your intuition because it's not you're not developing the skill just so that you have intuition or you can access your intuition, right? Uh, you're developing the skill so you can use your intuition and leverage it to make choices in your life that are in alignment with what is highest for you, right, with your deepest desires, what is highest for you and those around you. So you want to really use those intuitive skills and leverage them for your decisions and the choices you make in your life. And it, it, that in turn is going to generate a feedback loop, right? So the more you use your intuition and you follow it and you start realizing how the choices you're making are more in alignment or feel better because you're using your intuition, that keeps reinforcing. It's almost like developing a muscle, right? Like just going to the gym to build your quads or your glutes or whatever, right? The more you use it, the more you exercise it, the stronger that part of you becomes. So that's something that people seem to forget and that I just want to reinforce. Just use it, create that feedback loop, and continue to reinforce the fact in yourself that you can tap into your intuition and that you can leverage your intuition. And the last 
tip that I have for you is to start relying more on your feelings. Now, a few minutes ago, we talked about relying more on your intuition, which is almost synonymous with feelings. But I want to separate or differentiate these two a little bit because I think it's important that we start relying more on our own emotions and our own feelings rather than seeking validation from external sources, like from other people, or following our conditioning or what we think is expected of us or what we think is right or what we think we should be doing. I can make a whole other video about right and wrong and how I just have a lot of issues with the concept of what's right and what's wrong because that's very, very relative. But in any case, I'm, I digress. So um, I think it's important for us to sort of be more, um, really, really pay more attention um, and rely more on our feelings and our emotions because I think all of those things are related, right? Our intuition, our emotions, all of that is related and it is important for our own integrity and our own no um, knowledge of self to be able to not only feel but express validate and leverage our internal barometer, right? Our internal source of information. And I think all of those things are pieces of the puzzle that as you start putting them together, they really help you move into a life that is more fulfilling and more integrated. Well, I hope this video was helpful to you. Please, as always, put down in the comments if any of you have any other tips or any other experiences on developing your own intuitive skills, things that were helpful to you so that we can share and other people can also learn from that. Or if you have any questions for me, please, again, feel free to put it in the comments. And again, thank you very much for listening and for joining me. And until next time.